Good morning. And welcome to you. If anyone is visiting with us or you have an updated address or you have a prayer request or just want to leave a note, uh, please uh, use the green sheet and, and leave that in the offering plate when it comes along. Uh, and also, if you have prayer requests during the week that you, you want to get to us, uh, there's information in your bullets in my phone number, which you can text or phone the churches and so on. Email addresses, because we really believe that God answers prayer, and we want to be praying with you about whatever is going on. Which brings me to another thing, too. We're going to be praying, of course, for all the people who that storm went through their area. And uh, Alan Yarbrough had to go down to Florida to uh, help some of his family who uh, uh, had damaged their house and car from that storm. So we'll be continuing to keep them in our prayers. Why do I do this? I, I, I was just thinking, I've been at a conference Monday through Thursday so I take no responsibility in whatever I say in my sermon this morning. I, I can't do that. You know that, but I, that's what I feel like saying. But it's good to be back. It was a good conference. In just a week after, next two weeks from, uh, I'll have to go to another conference uh, uh, for all the pastors. Uh, we have Grief Share Ministry going on, and it's a very important ministry. And it's open to people who are members, not members. Anyone who you think might have help to come in and get to know some folks to help them through their grief. Uh, there is a pastor's conference coming up Monday, October 10th through Wednesday, October 12th. That is required. So part of the reason I say that is because the Parish Planning Council is, will be meeting on Monday, October 10th. So I won't be able to be there. And if you have any business you want me my opinions on or whatever, just, just let me know or anything in a report. We're still offering parking lot communion because uh, we still have to be careful uh, regarding COVID and everything. It seems like a long time, but people are still uh, experiencing uh, COVID. And uh, so be careful, pray about it. I'm, I'm more than glad to come either visit you or serve you communion uh, in the parking lot in a very safe way. Uh, check out the, the Keener Farm announcement in your bulletin. Uh, the, the name of the website uh, is there too that you can look at when you get home. And uh, looking ahead, uh, Matthew Keener especially running the farm there wanted to put something into effect that would help people uh, uh, who may need food uh, coming up uh, this coming year. So yeah, check that out and, and consider donating too. So want to welcome you to again. And uh, just before uh, we begin, our first hymn will be after the psalm, and it's 798, but the verses will be 1 through 4 and 8 through 9. So verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 9, and any announcements? <laughs> Um, so just a reminder of uh, the Miami Valley Women's Center Gala is coming up. It's actually on Friday, October 21st. Uh, but uh, I know some of you have mentioned that you're interested in going, but anybody that else is interested, we have a table that we sponsor as a church, so let me know. Um, and I need to actually turn in the names by October 6th, so if you let me know today, uh, either in person or via email, that'd be great. Um, and then also, if you want to, um, the church is paying for it, but if you want to reimburse the church for that. Uh, this week had a church for Concordia and noted for the Miami Valley Women's Center gala as well. Um, and then the other one is apparently there's a birthday today, so there's Bill's Donuts in, so people may want to stay for Sunday school and help us eat Bill's Donuts for Hetty's birthday. Oh, okay. Yeah, so happy birthday, Hetty. And uh, 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 there will be donuts afterwards, especially I saw the big box there, so please uh, stop by the, the back Sunday school room uh, before you leave this morning, and of course you're welcome to stay for uh, Bible class too. So 
Please take your, your bulletin and on the front page of Psalm 62, and please stand with me as we begin our worship service. For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. How long will all of you attack a man to batter him, like a leaning wall, a tottering fence? For God alone, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. My fortress, I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory, my mighty rock, my refuge is God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him, for God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up, they are together lighter than a breath. Put no trust in exertion. Set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God. And that you, O Lord, belong steadfast love, for you will render a man according to his word.
we uh, continue on page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. We confess our sins. God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of
The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would turn our hearts to true repentance because when you turn our hearts, we will turn to you. Lord, work in our lives this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. And please be seated. Good morning, everybody. Old Testament reading from Habakkuk, Cook, uh, 1 to 4, chapter 2, 1 to 4. The oracle that Habakkuk, Cook, the prophet, saw. O Lord, how long shall I cry for help? And you will not hear, or cry to you violence, and you will not save. Why do you make me see inequity, and why do you idly look at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me, strife and contention arise. So the law is paralyzed, and justice never goes forth, for the wicked surrounds the righteous. So justice goes forth perverted. I will take my stand at my watch post and station myself on the tower. And look out to see what he will say to me and what I will answer concerning my complaint. And the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so that he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits its appointed time it hastens to the end, it will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come, it will not delay. Behold, his soul is puffed up, it is not upright within him. But the righteous shall live by his faith. This is the word of the Lord.
The epistle reading, 2 Timothy, chapters 1 to 14, or verses. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason I remind you to fan the flame, the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. And God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God who saved us and called us to a holy calling not because of our works, but because of our own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now has been manifested through the appearing in our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher, which is why I suffer as I do. But I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what he has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand with me for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. And he said to his disciples, temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom they come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were cast into the sea, than that his she caused one of these little ones to sin. Pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in the day, and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Will any one of you who has a servant plowing or keeping sheep say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and recline at table? Will he not rather say to him, prepare supper for me and dress properly? And serve me while I eat and drink, and afterward you will eat and drink. Does he thank the servant because he did what he was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were commanded, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. This is the gospel of the Lord.
Please be seated. The song you heard the choir sing is from Lamentations 521. It's the last, second last verse in the book of Lamentations. And it goes like this, restore us to yourself. And it really means re- make us return to yourself, O Lord, that we may be returned. And they use the word restored or whatever, but coming back to God. And then the prayer is renew our days as of old. What was not included in the song was unless you have utterly rejected us and you remain exceedingly angry with us. And there is the fact that in the Bible there is teaching that there is such thing as the wrath of God. And it also teaches that we have all sinned. When you start reading through the book of Leviticus, you just get more and more reasons to know that you've sinned and you can't do it right, and more reasons that, to know that you need repentance. And uh, by the way, this coming uh, Tuesday evening, I believe it is, uh, because the day in the Bible starts, you know, and it was evening, and then it was, you know, it starts when the sun goes down. And you might, well, that sounds strange that in the Bible, the day starts in the night. But in our looking at things, it starts in the middle of the night at midnight, so it's really not any stranger than we do. So when the sun goes down and it becomes dark on Tuesday, it will be the Day of Atonement. And these uh, days were easy to, to uh, count off because they went by a calendar that went by the moon cycle. So all you had to do is have a clear night and be able to watch the moon, and you could count off the days. In Leviticus 23, it says this. Now on the tenth day of this seventh month, you might have heard uh, Rosh Hashanah, it's the new year. Yeah, actually it was the Babylonian new year, and they just brought that custom back with themselves from Babylon. The new year actually is in the spring, Uh, at the time of Passover. And this is the seventh month of the year. So on the tenth day of the seventh month is the day of atonement. And it shall be to you a time of holy convocation, and you shall afflict yourselves and present an offering to the Lord. So that's where you get the word, the term Yom Kippur. It's actually in in here, it's interesting, it's Yom Kippurim, which means plural. Uh, the day of basically, literally, it means coverings. And that makes sense. It's like I have you covered. Blood was applied at the time of Passover. And when God saw the blood, he passed over with his wrath over those homes and those people. But it's usually translated in English, atonement, which is kind of more of a commentary than it is a literal translation of it, which is okay because it does have a lot of meaning and it's not wrong, but sometimes it gets to be a little hard to get a handle. So what I do is I start doing what they call a word study. So you can find out right in the Bible where that Hebrew word is used, and you can also go to, it's really fascinating, not only all the times it appears in the Bible, but you can also see how it is uh, translated into the Greek. They call it the Septuagint, if you want to get an extra handle. Then you could look in the New Testament, of course, where we do, where it gives more on the meaning. But what's interesting, you start studying this through, you keep seeing this word about this covering, mercy seat. Those words aren't actually mercy and seat there. It's the covering of the Ark of the, the Covenant. So anyway... It means a covering, and it applies to things, which, for example, it talks about the priest's holy garments, and they're to be uh, made atonement for. It talks about the food of God. Once the food comes in, an offering, and the priests are to partake of that part, it actually becomes like a holy food. 
And atonement has to be made for, for that. It talks about the altar where the sacrifices are made. Atonement has to be made for that. And it goes all the way to the land itself. God basically says, the reason I'm bringing you into this land because it has become polluted. Demonic influences sin. Innocent blood has been shed on this land. It has polluted the land and you need to make atonement for it so that it can be cleansed again. And then he warns his people, to, don't you dare do what they did before you. Don't you shed innocent blood. And I can't help being thinking of abortion. The shedding of innocent blood. God sees that. You remember Cain and Abel. Uh, am I my brother's keeper? I'm supposed to know where he is. And God says, his blood cries out to me from the land. So it can be things. It can be the whole land. But I guess where it applies to us too, and of course, you know, even in your hymn book, I think, I know agenda, wherever it is, we have rituals for dedicating a home to the Lord. Because we realize that we can, a place can be blessed, consecrated to God. That's why we call this a sanctuary. It has been set apart only for God's use. We have holy elements, uh, vessels up here. They're only used for communion. They're not used for snacks. They're used only for communion. And so uh, there are rituals for dedicating a new sanctuary to the Lord. Because we recognize that God can make things and places holy. And we want this to be a holy place of God that only his spirit has reigned here and here and that we can experience his presence when we come in. But as I was saying, it's probably more applicable applying to people because we are people and we need atonement. We need this covering. So you start going through and you look through all the uses of it and it's fascinating. You find out that the priests, they have to have atonement made for them and there has to be a sacrifice with blood to make atonement for the priests. And the atonement not only is for priests but for all of God's people and when there's atonement made or this covering through the blood that there is forgiveness there is forgiveness of sins that guilt is taken away through this atonement so all these things are associated with this word kippur throughout scripture yom kippur forgiveness the taking away of guilt there are peace offerings that are given so it makes us think of we have peace with god through jesus christ and there is cleansing. It's even a kind of a cleansing where there's a cleansing with water. And the priest was to bathe in this holy water, if you will, water put aside, put aside for God's use, to be cleansed. And I think one of the ways we can get a handle on what this means to be clean or unclean is uh, leprosy. If you had the disease of leprosy, you would be not go to a doctor or hospital, but you'd go to the priest who were instructed on how to handle this. And if it was in its contagious stages, you would be instructed that you had to go into quarantine. So you had to stay away with, from people who had, uh, didn't have leprosy, and you had to hang around with the people who did. And a group of lepers could be in your town and they would have to cry out, unclean, unclean, which means it's like, I've got COVID. I, one of the uh, ladies in our congregation, I heard this anyway, asked how uh, uh, her husband was, he had COVID. And she's, from what I heard, said, he, he's doing okay, so I'm going to throw his food down the stairs for him to... Uh, in other words, she wanted to say, she didn't want this COVID. You don't want to become unclean with catching the disease. 
We can really relate to that. And by the way, the words plagues come up in association with all this too. So a contagious disease, and it's almost this uncleanness. And not only does leprosy separate you from your family, your loved ones, but our sins separate us from our God. It's like we have to cry out unclean. And how do we get reconnected with our God ever again when we have this contagion of sin and God considers us unclean? And then it goes on that they would have something called a a scapegoat, but there were actually two different goats. There was one, we call it the scapegoat, and they were to lay their hands on the head of this animal And it was supposed to be like to transfer the sin from the priest and from the people on this animal. And this animal would be set loose in the wilderness, separated from the people of God. That's where we get the word scapegoat. Someone takes someone else's blame for something, but you got to blame someone. The blame goes on the scapegoat and goes off. And then there the other goat, there were the other one of the two was. It says the Lord's goat, and it was to be killed. And through that one, the blood would make atonement. And I want to say one other thing, too, and I, <laughs> I'm always uh, open to learning. I'm definitely not too proud to uh, learn at all. But when I read through this, it just says nothing about the Jewish feast. And I hear people say that often. These are the Jewish feasts. Well, they're the biblical feasts. In these chapters in the Bible, it doesn't say this is for the Jews to have in their worship. God says this is the feast of the Lord. There are appointed times. He says this is my appointed time. And that's why I try every year to look at his appointed times. There are the spring festivals of Passover and and what we call Pentecost, and so on. And then there are the fall feasts where we have the Day of Atonement. And then, and we'll look at this a little bit too, is the, the, the Feast of Tabernacles, which might be the, the way I see it, the most happy feast of all of them. But they all point to Jesus, each one of them. In Numbers 8, it says they are to make atonement so that there may be no plague. Well, I'm probably a little more sensitive to those things, just like you are. So you start reading through the Bible and you see the word plague. You start marking it up and make it real big. And What's plague got to do with anything? Sometimes a nation becomes so polluted with sin, innocent blood, and falling away from God that the whole land itself becomes... God's wrath can come through a plague. As a matter of fact, in number 16, that's happening. And so Moses is saying, hurry, make atonement for them. The plague is starting. It's just spreading throughout the people. And he says, for wrath has gone out from the Lord. The plague has begun. Quotation right from there. And the other element that's connected with atonement or this covering is blood all the way through. I don't know if you've ever driven by a slaughterhouse, but uh, it's not a nice aroma. I try to think sometimes what the temple, tabernacle worship was like. They had to sacrifice so many animals, thousands and thousands and thousands constantly. I'm sure there were things, I mean, there was frankincense, there were to try to make it, but from my human perspective, it was a dirty thing for all of these animals to be slaughtered and all the blood to be shed and all the blood to be sprinkled. Even when the installation, you would call the ordination of Aaron, the Levite priest and his sons, They'd have to put some blood, I I can't remember all, but three different places. One was the earlobe. I want to look into this farther. I mean, why do you put blood on the earlobe? 
And, and then there was two other places. Blood had to be shed. So in Le Leviticus 17, it talks about the blood. Some people will try to say, oh, that's not what it means about the life is in the blood. Listen to this. I'm going to read it. It repeats itself. When the Bible repeats itself, it's kind of like, yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Listen. If any one of the house of Israel or the strangers who sojourn among them eats any blood, okay, so this is diet, I will set my face against that person who eats blood and will cut him off uh, from among his people. I'm sorry. I was just, there was a song when I was a kid. We lived in Polish neighborhood. It was, Who Stole the Kishka? Well, if you don't know Polish, uh, Kishka is blood sausage. Probably a good, godly person stole the kishka so you wouldn't eat it. And then it says in verse 11, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it for you on the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement by the life. And it's true. I mean, if you bleed to death, you're done. Your life flows right out from you. I don't even want to try to think about Jesus, but he had been whipped and tortured. He had nails through his hands and however they did it, down towards his feet and so on. They put a sword into his side. They, they skinned him alive the way they whipped him. It doesn't say he bled to death, but I'll guarantee you there was a lot of blood that fell from him. And it's saying it's the blood that makes atonement by the life, because the life is in the blood. So verse 12 says, Therefore I have said to the people of Israel, No person among you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger who sojourns among you eat blood. And anyway, that, that's, that's how animals will be slaughtered too, so that their blood is drained, so you don't eat it. Who wants to buy chicken anywhere? He wears dark things where the blood wasn't drained out. And any one also of the people of Israel or of the strangers who sojourn among them, who takes in hunting any beast or bird that may be eaten, shall pour out its blood and cover it with earth. Verse 14 again. For the life of every creature is its blood. Its blood is its life. Still quoting, Therefore I have said to the people of Israel, You shall not eat the blood of any creature, for the life of every creature is its blood. Whoever eats it shall be cut off. I believe the reason God said that he could see that his son was going to shed his blood, so all of this was sacred to God the Father as he looked into the future. Now think about Jesus. Everything, his was the most costly offering. He came down from heaven, took on human flesh, and a normal human being, you and I could die for people to save their souls, but you can't save their full soul because there's no one apart from Jesus from heaven who could give his life as a ransom for our souls. It was a costly offering. It didn't cost us anything, but it cost him everything, to come down and give his blood for us. And he gave his life. He poured out his blood for us on the cross. He died. And I hope for me and for you when we hear those words, when we take communion, this is my body and this is my blood. He's giving you his life. Whoever believes in him has eternal life. We are receiving his life, which is eternal, into us. We receive forgiveness, just like the atonement did in the Old Testament, but even better because his blood was shed and the animals could only point to him. They couldn't really take away sin, but the blood of Jesus takes away our sin it brings total forgiveness. It brings cleansing. It's beautiful words. Uh, if, we, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to purify us 
to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and from sin, clean before our Lord. It's an old song. I, I, if you ever want to team up with me on Facebook, every once in a while I put something up there. The last thing I put was uh, Welcome Back by a, a song, a, a group called Love Song, way at the beginning. It's not perfect theology, but it's kind of poetic. But I can't believe how many people, I just, I didn't even know those people were still out there, friends and from different countries saying, oh, like this one, we, we want to hear it more. Well, there's another song I got to try to remember to put on, and it's, it's by a, uh, well, back then she was a young lady, not anymore. Uh, her name was Honey Tree, and her name was actually Nancy Hennigbaum. If you know German at all, that means if you translate her last name into uh, English, it was Honey Tree. And it's a beautiful song about clean before my Lord I stand. It, it, it's just gorgeous. The blood of Jesus brings cleansing to us. It brings peace with God. We no longer have to worry about his rash, wrath. You see, that's one of the problems. If you're thinking, and we're going to just look for a moment, just that somehow you can fast and work your way back to God. It's not going to happen, and you'll never have assurance of salvation either. You'll always be wondering if you did enough, but I can give you the answer to that. No, you cannot. You will never do enough to work your way back to God. So if you have anything like, oh, I'm going to uh, fast, starting Tuesday night and through Wednesday, and therefore I'm going to earn, ain't going to happen. It reverses the curse of death, the plague, disease, everything. Now it's, it's partly now and fully now that we have eternal life, but in the future it will be entirely reversed because of his atonement for us. And just like the scapegoat, I love the, I saw someone before. He said, like, here's us and we just have sin. That's all we have to offer to God. That's it. And God is here, Jesus, and he is perfectly sinless. And what faith does is it takes all of our sins and transfers them to Jesus who functions like a scapegoat all of our sins are taken away. He died outside the camp, it says. And we have all of our sins. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away all the sin of the world. So in Lamentations, chapter 5, it says, Restore us to ourself, or shuv, it means to return. Make us to return to you. Lord, we need your Holy Spirit. If you do it, if you don't do it, we can't. I saw a beautiful quote by Luther. I wish I had copied it down. But in a nutshell, he is basically saying, this whole gift of salvation is all from God. We can't even repent and return to him. But he, by his Holy Spirit, moves us to turn to him. And when he does that, then we return. So Lamentations Make us to return to yourself, O Lord, that we may be returned and restored. Renew our days as of old, because we know... Uh, now, I'm sorry, I changed this last part. Lamentations, it says, unless you have utterly rejected us and you remain exceedingly angry with us. And at that time, with all the wrath of God stuff, they didn't know. But now we know, because we know the rest of the story with Jesus. And we know that he has not rejected us and that he is no longer angry at us because of the blood of Jesus Christ that makes atonement. I don't know if this is the best theological statement, but I still like it. If you think of atonement and you think of the word at one, Mint. I don't know what you do with the mint. But to, atone, to make it one again, it makes us at one again with God. Your sins have separated you from your God. 
But Jesus, by being the scapegoat, by giving his life, being the sacrifice of God, God sacrificed the Lamb of God. He takes away your sins, and now you've been made one with him again. It's, it's so good, it's really hard to believe. But you have to start believing. You have to accept it. You've you got to keep telling yourself, oh, I did something wrong, or I didn't do enough, and everything else, and oh, I slipped again, and I sinned, and everything. God can't love me. My sins separate me. No, you have to accept the atonement that Jesus made for you. And you need to say, I don't care what the devil says. I don't care what the stupid self and son me tries to accuse me of. I know that, that I have the word of God that says, I have been forgiven. I have been cleansed. I stand clean before my Lord. My sins have been taken away. They got put upon Jesus and they were nailed to the cross when he died. And I stand totally clean so I can approach the throne of God boldly with courage, knowing that he loves me. That he has not rejected us and he is no longer angry with us. So on the day of uh, atonement, I get tempted to say, you got some time? I got a whole nother stuff. <laughs> I won't do that. It says we are to afflict ourselves. And that's usually interpreted fast. I want you to know something, that you can fast and not eat for 24 hours and have nothing to do with God. You can stop eating for it, and just because you'd like to lose some weight and look a little better or whatever, and think foolishly that somehow that in itself will bring you... And now I will say that fasting is a biblical principle. You find it in the Bible. And it is a way of afflicting yourself if you do it right from your heart. But to afflict yourself, it's this... Uh, ana. It's really interesting. The same word, because I thought, well, and it's like 30, something like 62, 30, I can't remember. They got numbers for all these words. And then the next one is 31. And I looked it up, and one of them says, uh, afflict yourself. And then the next one, 31, says, like, give an answer to. And I looked at it, and I said, this looks really crazy. It looks like the exact same word. <laughs> So just to make sure, I started memorizing, okay, ein, and I, I put the, but just to make sure, I copied the Hebrew word from the other one, I put it right next to it, and it's the same word. I don't know why they gave two numbers, it's just a rich word that can mean different things, but the way I look at it, and I like to do the literal, that way I can remember the words more, but it's like you need to give an answer for what you've done, you need to give an answer, an accountability to yourself. On this day of atonement, if you ignore the Lord and you just go on without of anything, is what he was saying to his people back then, and it's the same now, if you ignore the gospel lesson and you just don't care about your sin, you're going to be cut off. But if you just heed the call, and you see, when you, when you have to give answer to someone, it puts you in a subservient, humbling situation. You know, I can't imagine uh, police or FBI coming to my door with guns and saying, you need to give an answer for something. But I know I would have to if they did because they have much more power greater than I do and I have to answer to the law. And he's saying that if you don't see your sin and your accountability to God, if you don't humble yourself and give an answer to God, there's no salvation. It's not that God wants to throw you in jail forever or to punish you for your sins. He wants you to humble yourself and come to him and to receive your atonement, the covering that comes with the blood of Jesus himself. So Father, we pray that you would use words, especially the ones that were written or read right from the Bible. Lord, help us to uh, 
remember your holy days, your appointed times, and just thank you so much that you fulfilled all this, and they teach us to your son Jesus. They, they lead us to him. They teach us about him and give depth to everything that he's done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we now turn to our hymnals uh, as we uh, confess our faith with the creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So let us pray. Father, we give you thanks for the atonement that you have provided for us. Lord, we acknowledge the holiness of the blood of the life that you give for our atonement. And Lord Jesus, we give you so much praise and thanksgiving that while we only deserved the wrath of the Father, in the condemnation of the Father. You became the one that our sins through faith are transferred to. You took our sins upon yourself on the cross lovingly, and you shed your blood for us that we could have your life forever. So we thank you and praise you. And Lord, we pray for your church. We pray for our families. We pray for our nation and our world. Lord, we think of the, uh, the people who have, the storm has gone through uh, in the south, and Lord, we pray for everyone there who are, is working through all this. Lord, we pray for farmers across our land, and including the, the Keeners. Lord, we pray that you'd bless them, and, and no matter what this economy does, Lord, help them to remain serving you in these matters, Lord, protect our smaller farms from going out of business through the, these tough times of inflation. And Lord, we thank you that uh, you've put upon the hearts of the Keeners to have a, a, something to be able to help people out if they can't afford food coming up uh, in this fall. Lord, we pray for all those who can't be with us for any reason. And Lord, we especially pray for Dave, Mindy. We pray for Rosemary, Rita and Pam, Charlotte, Barb and Tracy. We continue to pray for Alyssa. We pray for Rachel, for her coming surgery and for her healing and for her friend, Jerry Mitchell. Father, we pray for Megan, serving uh, her nation and us over and uh, across the seas. We pray for our nation and for our leaders. Lord, help us all, all of our politicians, all of our leaders, all of our churches, to realize that we are going to give an answer to you. That we need to humble ourselves before you. Receive your forgiveness and receive your Holy Spirit so that we can be renewed and made new people to serve you in a holy way that glorifies your holy name and serves those around us. 
Father, we pray especially for those battling addiction to drugs and so on. Lord, have mercy upon us and our nation, our families, our church. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we cast all of our cares upon you, knowing that you care for us. And we can rest, we can relax as we put all our cares, our needs upon your shoulder, knowing that you care for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Lord, in all circumstances, to praise you knowing that you are good and that you are compassionate and that your mercy endures forever, that you have all wisdom, that you are the most high God. So therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying.
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, to you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you forever. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you.
to life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. May the true body and blood of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. and blood of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. Christ given for you. May the true body and blood of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please stand. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Peace.